right, everybody, welcome in to the DNVR Rapids Podcast. I'm your host, Mitchell Carroll, Merchel at underscore underscore Mitchell James, and I am joined by the superest of super producers. Super producer Yaya on the ones and twos. There he is. What's up, Yaya? I'm sad, but I'm happy, but I'm sad. Whoa, that's a <laughs> complicated mix of emotions. <laughs> Uh, we'll I dive in, Dev, and we'll talk about. We'll it dive into that in a second. I'm also joined by the hot dog extraordinaire. Let's go. And Twitter superstar, the Dev Machine, Devin Whitek. How you doing, Devin? Doing great. You doing good? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we're gonna get into why you're doing good, and I know why you're doing good. But first, <laughs> I have to introduce our other guest, the one and only Joseph Samuelson. Hey, everybody. Welcome in, Joseph. How you doing, bud? I'm doing good. Really happy after last night. Uh, yeah, didn't go like amazing, but the U.S. is back at the World Cup, man. I could not and care less about the score uh, of that game, literally at all. Yeah, yeah, keep uh, keep it down, keep it down. We're talking about important things right now. <laughs> Look, Psych, I love the we're, US. we're fresh lie. off. <laughs> we're like fresh them. off the United States qualifying for the 2022 World Cup in Qatar. Uh, you see this beautiful Sammy Vines jersey over here on my boy Joseph Samuelson I, here. I got the mic in the, in the way, so I can't. That's okay. It looks great. Like shift around. But it looks. Great. Trust me, it looks and great. Not yeah, just, it's his number, not, though. Not That's just the U.S. The Mexico he... also qualified. Jesse and does, Mexico did indeed qualify for the 16th straight time, I think. Canada mm -hmm. and our boy Mark Anthony K, of course, finished at the top of the group. Yay. Shout out to Mark Anthony K. The Rapids. The Rapids will be represented in Qatar. Um, knock on wood. Knock on wood, of course. Yeah, find some. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay, yeah, but uh, first up, before we get into that, and we will dig into the World Cup qualifying a little more, and we're also going to just kind of do a quick around the MLS. We're also going to get into uh, the, of course, Rocky Mountain Cup game this weekend, um, and then we're going to have a little segment called uh, What Do You Hate? Um, and then first, we have to get into the Rapids news, the pressing Rapids news. Uh, the Rapids, of course, uh, traded with Cincinnati uh, to acquire Gustavo Vicia, a 22-year-old Ecuadorian center back who um, I believe he started 17 games last season, scored two goals, um, also has a pretty successful career, at least at the uh, under-20 level with the Ecuadorian national team, played every single minute of the under-20 uh, World Cup um, where they finished third, so he played as many minutes as any team can play. Um and, you know, he seems athletic, um, good in the air. Um, everything I've seen is that the Cincinnati fans loved him. And they said, this is the guy, this was the bright spot. And we sold him for quite a bit of money. The Rapids sending over 400000 in GAM money this year, 400000 next year, up to four fifty, and a 10% buyback if the sales price exceeds what the Rapids paid. Does that sound right, Joseph? Correct well, me if the I'm only wrong thing, on this. The only thing we're missing is that because Viasia was on loan uh, with Cincinnati at the uh, last season, Cincinnati basically purchased his buy clause at the end of uh, at the end of the year, and they put up reportedly around five hundred fifty thousand of the one million clause. Oh, okay. Um, and the Rapids are due to pay the remaining. 450. So in total, this is a roughly $1.3 million deal. But the issue is you can't always make a one-to-one -one comparison between allocation money and dollars. Sure. Point is, Rapids are making an extraordinarily huge investment. This is this another trend. investment along the lines of Max, a young guy um, with upside. This is an upside play for sure. Um, Based on, the, I mean, I don't know if it's, I mean, it's not a direct comparison to the max purchase, but it's a lot of money put into a young guy who seems to have a lot of upside and seems to be not necessarily a lock, but a very probable good MLS player. Devin, what do you, what do you take away from this? Uh, I mean, it's clear we're trying to fill that hole that Trusty is going to leave. I mm -hmm. think it's weird how early in the season it is for that. We got to find a way to make the, the lineups work with Trusty still here for a few sure. months. Um, I don't really know how they're going to pull that off because you can't. You obviously can't be sitting your uh, your future Premier League uh, center back. Right, 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 right. <laughs> um, but I am excited about it because, like you said, the fans from Cincinnati do seem like they, they there's. He's, he was a good piece for them. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I that one highlight that we have shows him making that great header. Um, I, I I just like the idea of another person for Jack Price to throw those uh, those, those set pieces over to. 
Uh, and of and his two goals, yeah. in twenty twenty one, yeah, both came from set pieces. Let's go, which is like generally expected when you're talking about center back goals, but it's still like a great sign that he's getting those goals. Uh, uh, you know, in their system, despite how chaotic the Cincinnati team was last year, <laughs> everybody seems chaotic to, is a very nice word for that. Listen, every, uh, I got friends in Cincy. I'm trying to be nice to them. But listen, hey, you don't got to be nice to anybody, Joseph. That's true. <laughs> Except me. You got to be nice to me. Okay, I'll be nice to you, Yaya. But the uh, point is, with with Viasia, the Rapids are getting an incredibly pacey, athletic. Still a little bit rusty, but high potential player. Um, and when you look at how Viasia performed last season, and you compare it to like the season bef- that Austin Trusty had in Philadelphia before he came to Colorado, they look really similar on paper statistically. When I did some research on Viasia, I watched like two of his games with FC Cincinnati last year. And one of them was his best game, you know, according to, uh, you know, statistical metric rankings or whatever. Um, and that was like a zero zero draw with the New York Red Bulls. And I also watched like one of his poorer games, which was a game when Cincinnati conceded, uh, I think, five goals in the game. Right. <laughs> um, but my point is, is that when I saw, I guess, mistakes that came from the play when, when Viasia had the ball I generally noticed that it was a problem with the supporting cast around him. Sure. Like he would boot up balls to, uh, you know, one of his midfielders who would like take one touch and then just completely lose it. And Cincinnati would be scored on a counter. Sure. Right. So I think like this is a really, this really fits the mold, like of a distressed asset type of player because it's clear since he needed like this allocation money right. to deal with like their roster issues from the previous years um, under their previous GMs and, and managers. And I think it was pork Smith was right to see that this was a good opportunity for the club to invest in a high value, high potential player. I really think that there's a, a knack to finding players, finding good players in bad situations. And I don't think, you know, you, you see, you get a defender from one of the worst defenses in the league and that might, be a bit of a concern on the surface, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the defender you're getting is poor. I think he's young. I mean, he's Listen, fitting it could be worse. They could be getting Jeff Cameron, right? Exactly. <laughs> and I mean, he's fitting in that under 22 slot. So all the under 22 slots are full now with Lucas and Max. Is there another one? No, it's just those uh, three, right? Lucas. Esto- yeah. Yeah. There's three yeah, slots. So Lucas, and Max and him. Um, and to, to kind of speak to a point that you brought up is like, why are they doing it so early? And I think it's because of the Kata injury mostly, right? I mean, that kind of probably sped up that timeline of acquiring that center back. Well, um, the other thing is you don't want to have trusty leave and then immediately have to throw a new guy in and hope it works. Getting Viasia in early means that the club can either, you know, test the waters with some substitute appearances or some starts in, in maybe open cup games uh, or you know, basically just it's, it's so they know what they're getting, I guess a little bit more in advance so they can plan the tactics around, you know, how Viasia is going to play once he becomes presumably a key starter after trustee leaves. Yeah. Yeah. Give me your, uh, your initial reaction when you saw the trade come through. I was excited, man. I'm excited at any time the Rapids acquire somebody, even if, it, <laughs> even if I don't know as much as I would like. Sure. I'm always just like, all oh, right, another guy to cheer for. I'm always down for that. Honestly, I think that's kind of been the theme of the Rapids most recent acquisitions is kind of like trusting Pork that this guy's dope because, you know, yeah. like and Max really, yeah. like has a sick YouTube highlight reel, but like we didn't know we were getting <laughs> really right. Like yeah, uh, it, Lucas at least has a little more film. You can see like, you know, exactly. he has played at the MLS level. Um, but there is sort of that mystery where it's like, oh, you know, like, what are we really getting here? And I'm always confident in those center back acquisitions because I am confident in Robin being able to coach him up. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like anytime we get a defender with Robin being a defender himself, being named one of the greatest defenders in MLS history, I trust it a lot. And I'm always really happy. Um, I love getting more culture into the team, too. I love getting different like ethnicities in here, getting different like backgrounds, Absolutely. getting like Latin America and all that. I really do like that. I like that we have Canadians. I like that we have uh, like Ghana. I like that we just have a little bit of everything. 
He should fit right in with the South America squad. There's like, quite a few. I mean, yeah. imagine like <laughs> Lucas, yeah, and then uh, you got Gustavo, and it's gonna be like a really fun. It, we can't even call it like the the dancing the dancing ladders or something in the back. <laughs> like it's gonna be it's gonna be like a fun like sure. cause I, I no, really, absolutely because I really do. And uh, what I kind of saw, he can also play left wing back in the left side. Yeah, and with uh, Estevez injury or maybe not wanting to pressure him too much either, not like bringing him out throughout the season. He can also play there, come play center uh, center back. Um, I was telling Mitch before the show that I really think it's more like an assurance kind of thing in case something happens as the as the year goes on. We already had a Danny Wilson like uh, hamstring injury. We also have Lucas Estevez getting injured. I think they kind of realize they don't have anybody else to step up except for Beta Shore, and they're like, we want somebody else just in case. Well, and for me, in case of an injury like Wilson, now you don't have to have Rosenberry out of position, and it's not like he's a bad exactly. option at that right center back. It's just better to have but him he's in a, as a as a right back. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Devin, any closing thoughts on the trade? Where where they're at um, roster wise? Anything else you want to see happen? Anything like that? Um, I don't think so. Not on that particular part of it. I think the roster looks solid. I hope we get we get Estevez back. He's at least questionable at the moment. But if we can get him back in there, um, other than not having Galvan in there, which stinks, it they look like they're in a good spot. Yeah. One other thing I just wanted to point out is that one, like you know, this is a guy who's two-footed like who has skill with the ball at both feet which is really valuable for a team that has uh, five uh, ostensibly defensive players right but are really Uh, three most of the time exactly exactly yeah um and the other thing is what this means for the rapids on the roster is that we now have 20 senior players on the team which means that you know the elephant in the room has always been is there a striker coming Someone has to go before that happens. It could be when Trusty leaves and frees Which up that spot on the Which is kind of roster. generally the sentiment that people are, right. are, are coming to, just kind um, of reading the tea leaves. But what we're seeing right now is that the, the team that's here is largely going to be is, is the team until oh, sure. the yeah. summer, pretty much. Like, I, I would be surprised. It would basically take a trade sending, you know, a guy like maybe Lewis or Shinoshiki somewhere else in order sure. to uh, fit in anybody new at this point. Now, I didn't really get to talk about it last week when we had Omar on because we were just really more talking on a, a club level and kind of more philosophical take on the team and, and his job and his role. So um, the Zardis rumors, right? Sure. And that's someone I have been on hard as an addition. Um, where's your head on that, Joseph? Do you think that's so route they could go? Do you see that the trade maybe sending a player back to Columbus to kind of free that spot up? Uh, any anything to that, or is it just an internet rumor and Rapids wanting a striker? I mean, I don't think there's anything concrete to it in terms of like w- what the like if the club is actually like going after him. Sure. I do think it would be a good a good addition. I think Zardes himself, like that sort of hardworking player, would really fit the Rapids setup. Exactly. And like issues like his first touch aside, like the. It seems like he would be the type of player that would really work under Robin Frazier's like tactical identity with Colorado. Yeah. So I think that would be a good move. Like I, I, I don't expect it to happen. And, and to be honest, like I've been beating the the Zardes drum since December. I think sure. in December, like uh, Columbus head coach Caleb Porter spoke to media and was like, "Oh yeah, we're really confident in Miguel Barry." And I was like, sort of seeing the writing on the wall that like this is the guy that Columbus is going to, uh, I guess, bet on for the coming year. And I was surprised there wasn't really any like rumor until like people started talking about him being shopped around uh, after the third game of the season. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it's going to happen before the summer. I think it could happen. I think it would work. I think it would be a, a solid move, but um, we'll see, I guess. You know, I mean, last summer, obviously, Badgie wasn't until later in the season, and that sure. proved to be a very good move, if a frugal one, I would say. Maybe not the, the highlight name you wanted to see, but it was a fit, and it worked obviously worked wonders as they finished at the top of the conference um let's move on now let's let's kind of do a little more global scale and that wasn't just a pun that was let's talk a little bit about the world cup um since our last pod the canadian national team qualified over the weekend but uh mac was not a part of that game uh got a red card on the flop <laughs> flops yeah yeah you rolled your eyes what you, uh, <laughs> listen i don't think K deserved a second yellow for that in that no, first game, no, right? No, 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 no. Listen, no, no, I just, I just want to, I just want to get my point out of here, right? Like the issue was his first yellow card was would have been a red in like any sort of top five league, like straight up. 
I'm not saying that like it was the ref correcting his mistake, but you know, it was sort of like the ball don't lie, right? My my biggest issue with it is that Kane needs to be smarter when he goes into that sort of environment and know that like leading in with your shoulder into a player is going to create a situation like that. Oh, of course. It was like something that could have been avoided. And I think like uh, once he gets a little bit more experience, especially like playing like those 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 games in Central America. Yeah. Like I think, you know, that won't be a, a huge problem for him in the future. I, okay. There's the one thing I do have to say. <laughs> sure. I'll hear, I'll hear you. <laughs> He's been waiting. He's been waiting. I, I'm on the opposite end. I thought it was a stupid foul, but I thought it was a yellow. You don't do that in any game. By the book, it's a yellow. If you, it's off but the is ball. it a yellow if the guy doesn't fall? Yes, it is because no, you're but, but does the ref give it? A, a no, because yeah, the I ref didn't even wouldn't have even seen it. But I think it's still a yellow, even if the okay, if the ref didn't. <laughs> he I turned around think, and saw the Tico <laughs> rolling around on the ground like a, he got shot. It's a soft yellow. Yes, I agree. Oh, soft but as yellow. But he it wouldn't have been just a regular yellow if he hadn't done the first foul. Yeah. So like because there was a second fa- like that there was already the first one, the second one had to be a yellow because it was something that was unprovoked. That we know of. There was no physical contact. Yeah. And he initiated it. By the rule book, it's a yellow. So you have to give him a yellow. Unfortunately, he already had a yellow, which cost the red. I Listen, guess- the good news is that he only played 90 minutes across the two games he played in this window. And right? I'm also, I, I really means, don't care about that. You're which right. Which means like- that he's now going to come back to Colorado having significantly more rest than, you know, a guy like Brian Acosta, who I think played 250 or some some odd minutes. Yeah. Um, this week, uh, like during this window. He's got him plenty of rest at the Rapids. He's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, I think, I think what I really took away from that, from that run Canada's on, and they were playing so well, and then I think they've kind of tailed off a little bit. And specifically, I think Mac was sort of rounding into form before that break and before he joined the team again. And I was really hoping to see that come through a little harder in terms of the games we saw. So, you know, it relatively quiet outside of a very loud ejection from the game, right? Like, um, and you know, in the really grand- a disappointing window for Canada generally. Yeah, I mean, it was, a, it was a poor to, window for them. The when you compare it to, like, yeah, everything. I mean, else it doesn't matter because they finished, you know, top. Their ranking did go down because of the loss to Panama, which affects their draw in the World Cup. Um, but uh, regardless, I just I wanted to see Matt kind of turn it on a little bit, right? Sure. It's a different role. It's a different game. It's a different team. And I was hoping that we would kind of see him take that goal scoring form that he's in and kind of turn that on did you do you have any thoughts on canada from the i don't care at all <laughs> okay Not there you go a tidy bit it's we're moving on it's world cup time moving on doesn't matter listen i'm happy they're there yeah of course i'll be rooting for canada <laughs> until they play the u.s in the world Cup. exactly look i mean it's exciting if they play the u.s in the world cup look it's exciting uh, to have they're going to the final it's the u.s canada final didn't you know <laughs> didn't i'm pretty you sure the, the u.s won't even win a win in the world cup <laughs> it's exciting to have a rapids player on another team, right? I assume a lot of... I mean, there's definitely Mexican national team fans that are uh, Rapids fans like Yaya and, and several others. But, you know, for the majority, there's going to be a lot of U.S. fans that are paying attention to the World Cup. And they also get to watch, you know, on, on non-America game days. They'll be able oh, to watch sure. Mac and play. And I think that's pretty rad. I'll, I'll stay up and um, watch Canada for sure. I, w- I wouldn't have otherwise. Right. Yeah. <laughs> also, I just like watching Alfonso Davies and Jonathan Davies. Yeah, I mean, play. yeah, Davies. I mean, it's a fun team for sure. Um uh, Herdman's a great coach. Yeah. Yeah, dude. First ever coach to take the women's and the men's into a World Cup. Yeah. That's pretty rad. Uh, in terms of the, the U.S., I mean, you know, we're not a uh, interna- USMNT podcast, but I think they played one of their best games ever in Azteca and got a 0-0 out of it. I think form-wise, they looked awesome. Their uh, passing was great. Their chances were there. Yeah. Um, Pretty big, bl- you know, a couple blunders on goals on should have been goals. It should have been Dosa Zero Part Three or whatever. But um, overall, got to be happy with where the USMNT is at. Even with that loss in Costa Rica, um, Qatar is going to be a drastically different atmosphere than San Jose, Costa Rica. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Are you, I, I, I don't it, think so. No. It's gonna be. It's gonna be weird though. It's like, gonna be it's, really weird. Like I see a lot of tickets being bought by American fans, Mexican fans, uh-huh. uh, Germans. But like the home field advantage is gonna be kind of strange there. I feel like it's in a weird, weird place. 
for it to really like some of these games I feel like are going to be really quiet and some of them are going to be really rowdy. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Especially about the cost of Qatar. Like, I've, yeah. I've read that it's one of the more expensive places to go a lot for the of, World Cup. A lot of rich people sitting back, <laughs> yeah, enjoying exactly. themselves. Honestly, that's what it is. Yeah. I mean, that's, especially this World Cup. I think that's I mean, yeah, I mean, the Brazil one is a little bit more affordable. It, it, spikes did go up and everything, but it was a little well, bit more affordable. Well, there's also, like, you know, not hotel rooms. You can't really drink anywhere except for, like, very specific bars in yeah. hotels. Um, generally speaking... It's going to be a strange one. Not to get into it, they shouldn't even be in Qatar in the first place because of some just terrible treatment of human beings uh, in general and their laws. And w- I could literally spend probably two hours talking about that. But <laughs> we have other things to talk about, including the first game of the Rocky Mountain Cup of the season is this weekend right here at the Dick. We got Real Salt Lake coming to town. Fake Salt Lake. Fake Salt Lake. Let's make sure we say it right. Not we right have now. Fake Salt Lake coming into town. Um, Shout out Nighthawk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you Nighthawk for that. Um, they are currently sitting second in the Western Conference, ten points, um, with one extra game. They do have overrated. a game in hand. They are overrated. That is true. We're gonna get into the hate cast here in a little bit. Um, <laughs> Uh, Colorado three points behind, so they can even up with them with the win this weekend. Um, Joseph, let's talk big picture before we get into specifics here. Um, Real Salt Lake, second, yes, with five games, but do you think that's a legit standing for them right now? Well, so there's, there's, there's a few schools of thought, right? Like, on one hand, like the teams that they've beaten, like, pretty, pretty pretty good resume builders right sure. like uh you have new england seattle nashville all teams that were in the top like or in in it was were seriously considered to be mls cup contenders and that new season. england game might be the mls game of the year so far too or right. close to yeah. it yeah. yeah yeah no yeah the snow classico and yeah. at foxborough uh sorry, no. you can't have the snow classico that's a colorado thing oh okay Find- sorry the, the snow soccer game. The snowy soccer, soccer game. The yeah. snowy, snowy match. The snowy soccer match <laughs> in Foxborough. They, they uh, cannot have a snow classical. That's ours. I'm sorry. Continue, um, Joseph. Sorry. Well, you, you could also look at their what they've done as far as expected goals. And they're actually underperforming their expected goals tally. Right? Like, so they're, uh, I think, one, a full goal underneath uh, like what they have been expected to score up, up to this point, which shows that Maybe, if anything, they've been getting a little bit unlucky this season. Um, but, I mean, listen, they're coming off of a 1-0 loss on the road to Sporting Kansas City. They have an extraordinary injury crisis that I'm sure we're about to get into. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, listen, they only have two healthy center backs. Let's go. On their first team roster. <laughs> Like we know, Orozco and Silva are getting the start on Saturday because they have because they quite literally, literally can't else. play anyone else. I mean, they could play some people out of position, but I, I mean, guess if we're doing this in a month, right, and we're sitting here talking, yeah, are they even close to second? How many spots further down do you think they will be? They're gonna this, middle. Sure. You middle. You think middle, middle, middle of the pack? You're saying before. sixth to yeah. eighth? Yeah, I think so. I I still think Real pro- will probably be a playoff team this year. Sure. Just because I think. I think Pablo Mastroeni has has evolved as a coach a lot since he was with Colorado. Like he's st- his game plans are still high pressure, uh, de- defense first, mentality first. Um, but he's been a lot more calculated, I guess, sure. in his approach towards matches. Since his, I think he's learned a lot sure. uh, after his I think assistant stint at Houston. Like I think he's really grown into the league, and I think. Listen, if, if anybody can instill like a fighting spirit in them mm-hmm. to go on a good run, it's him. And that's the reason why like Salt Lake went as far as they did in the playoffs last year. Devin, uh, for those who don't know, and I think, you know, our our audience is a lot of people who are wanting to learn about the Rapids and join the community and jump in from DNVR, whether it's yeah. the Broncos or the Rat or the Nuggets or whoever got them into it. For those people Rocky Mountain Cup. What does it mean to C38? What does it mean to the Rapids themselves? Is it just, you know, a random rivalry game on the schedule? Or is there truly something extra and special when it comes to this match? It's 
I mean, so first off, it's it's uh, it's supporter driven. Like sure. We have you have the, these uh, different rivalries all over the place, like Broncos, Raiders, and right. Avalanche, Wild, stuff like that. Sure. Where the the the, the fans of the of the fan base the fan bases are a big part of it, mm-hmm. but like it's literally just it exists because we decided to to hate each other. Okay. We we got the trophy. <laughs> We got the trophy. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have um, their committee that we work that we work with, mm-hmm. where we make decisions on which games count and which ones don't. Um, it means it, it means a lot to sure. both teams or both teams fans in the fact that uh, I, it, it's it's been so tough um, for the Rapids to win that for me it's it's the game of the season. Okay. Like, uh, and I don't know the answer to this. I'm actually genuinely asking this. Is the trophy going to like be there? Like will they will it be present? Will they see it? Do they like Yeah, so the the trophy actually gets presented uh, by the fans. Okay. So out on the field, the fan will be out there handing it off will, to will the players. Will it be at like this specific game? I mean like this, this yeah. Oh, yeah. It'll okay. be at That's the tailgate. Okay. It'll, It'll be, be at the tailgate. In, it'll be brought into the stadium okay. by the fans and oh, Let's and, go. And 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 then the teams will see it and then it gets handed off to whoever wins at the end of it by a fan. Okay, speaking of the tailgate, real quick, uh, myself and Ryan Green, uh, RG, the superest video man that uh, in the whole world, uh, will be on the C38 bus out of DNVR. So go ahead and get your tickets uh, through C38. Take the bus over to the game. Hang out at the bar beforehand. Um, Ryan will be getting a sweet little video blog going, um, kind of just show off the C38 experience. Um, so make sure you check that out. Uh, digging into the game a little bit, I think the biggest thing is injuries. Uh, right now, Luke um, Lucas Estevez is questionable. Questionable. Max then, good to go. Yeah, Max isn't listed. The only the only guys that are listed other than Lucas on the injury report are the three guys who are out with like long term injuries, sure. like Which, Raz, yeah. Keda, and Galvan. And so, I mean, you look at that and you're like, oh man, Lucas questionable. He's been playing really well. Oh, that's a bummer. And then you look <laughs> over at Fake Salt Lakes. Uh, Injury report, and it's like ten reading the long. front page of the newspaper. Um, g- uh, do you want to go ahead and break that down for us, Joseph? I mean, I don't have all the names on the top sure. of my head. I think I think Devin has them right. Devin, here. hit me. Oh yeah, I mean, it's I have to, <laughs> I have to scroll for a little bit actually. <laughs> so we got uh, we got Kabelhoff out three to four weeks. Holt Torres plantar fascia or fascia three to six months. Justin Glad's out. Aaron Herrera's out. Uh, Krylak's coming back from an injury. Nick Beasler has a nose injury. David Ochoa, some sort of calf injury. We don't actually know where he is apparently. Uh, Hazley's <laughs> out. Farnsworth out. I like, there's like so many names here. It's even hard to to, to keep track. And um, it's also worth noting that Bobby Wood was a recent ad, like just uh, a few days ago, I believe, to the report. So, like, oh. the only striker. Oh, I think that they have who's technically healthy is Rubio Rubin Rubin mm-hmm. who himself is off just of an got yeah, just came just off back. of the injury report. He right. played tw- I think he played 15 20 minutes last week against Sporting KC. And listen like they're they're in dire straits at the moment, which is why it's like really important for the Rapids to honestly like score boatloads of goals this weekend <laughs> because we all know what happens every time that the Rapids no matter how good or how bad they are go to Salt Lake. We always know what happens, and like they just—they just can't—they just can't. Right, that get goal consistent. differential, you gotta stack it up ahead of time. Exactly. <laughs> that exactly. Willie Yarborough goal is still haunting, man. It's so good. No, silly. man, no, man. I didn't mean that one. It's that 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 Tim Howard running out and uh, that one's really bad. A red card. Well, the one that really like hurts. It hurts to last year because I'm like they have a great team. First, and like yeah. I knew the Rocky Mountain Cup to like really. We like, were better kept, than them. And yeah, we still and it's lost, just yeah. like that goal, like especially <laughs> off like a pass that should have just gone straight, like and like fling it out goes right through his legs, past the line. But listen, like the the Rapids just they need to take advantage of the situation. Okay, oh, so let's it's never let's gonna talk about be that, then. Let's, like more beneficial than this. So like, let's talk about that. It seems like Fraser has really found a formation that he likes and a formation that the players are succeeding in. I think this is one of the better runs of form that we've seen. Um, they seem all the players seem comfortable within this sort of five two three. That's really a three five two that changes all over the pl- you know like what like 
whatever it is and however you want to say, I think uh, Matt Pollard calls it the empty bucket, uh, which kind of makes sense, right? It's just <laughs> big circle with two midfielders hanging out in the middle. Um, do you see them? Do you see Robin kind of trying anything weird, knowing that Real's, sorry, knowing that fakes roster is basically nothing right now? Do you see something? I don't see. Do you anything see him major. No. throwing? You know, yappy a bunch of minutes, or oh, you know, no. something like that no. to just sort of just to to, sure. to have some early run for someone that we haven't seen a lot of yet. Um, like I think it's one thing I would like to see is I would like to see Max get a start. Yeah, um, absolutely. obviously that probably depends on how well he's been performing in training. But like I wouldn't be mad to see the Barrios Lewis Rubio front three that we've seen in the last three games because it has led to goals. Like the yeah. Houston game aside, um, like where we the only goal came off a set piece. Like Rubio's been on like fire this year with three goal contributions and five starts. Um they and, and he historically has done well to score against Salt Lake. He scored three against them with the Rapids and one against them with Sporting KC. No Rapids player on the roster currently has scored more against Salt Lake. Um, I think that they will be looking to Rubio to sort of, I guess, set the mentality um, this weekend. But I would like to see Max underneath. I don't think there's going to be a huge tactical shift in terms of like formation. Sure. I think they'll want to play the game that they've been used to playing and that the game that, that's been honestly getting them and at home the has results. been pretty much dominant once we, they settled into this you know, straight the, up yeah the communicaciones yeah. game aside but it, even it, that but it, even that game was they still were dominant zero Correct. at yeah. home after exactly. 90 minutes like, right it's not the result we wanted and like i'll be the first person to complain sure. about the championship but they still did win one but zero. they but Correct. they but they won and then they won three no and then they won two no so i mean clearly yeah. at home they have something going um Devin, if you have one specific area, whether that's a player on player, whether that's position group on position group, whether anything like that, what is your one thing you are looking for the most? What gonna watch the most this weekend? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I'm or a player say, you want to see step up or something like that. I want to see the center backs and the back lines stay in position because every time I've seen Salt Lake take advantage of us and win these games that we should have won, it's always on the counter. And, and I think that's how Pablo is going to come or Pablo is going to come in here and have that set up. He's going to they're on the road. All right, guys, bunker down and injury and, like and injury sneak riddled. behind us. That's that's what they're going to try to do. I've seen it so many times. Mm-hmm. Until I see it stopped, that's going to be the thing I'm watching for. I think they're going to play defense first, like you said. But it's also worth noting that, like, the way Mastroni's been playing or been, like, lining up Salt Lake is that they do extremely, like, like, they play extremely high pressure. Sure. So even though they concede possession and, like, deuce it defensively, like, when teams come at them, like, they sort of, like, respond back with pressure of their own. And that's led to, like, a lot of turnovers through the first five weeks of the season, that's how they've been. uh, That's how they managed to get wins against New England and Seattle and Nashville is because they punished teams who made sloppy mistakes, like Devin pointed out. Sloppy mistakes at the back, made a crucial interception or pass block or whatever that gave them possession in the final third or, or in the middle third. Long ball down the field, cross, goal. Like, We've seen that from Salt Lake this year so far, and like I honestly think, like cause considering their injury situation, I don't think they can change like how they're tactically like oh, their tactical outlook at all. Like they're gonna play how Mastroni wants them to play. Sure. And the does Rapids that make you nervous? Ready. Does that make you nervous for Max minutes, considering he hasn't had a lot of on the field minutes with these guys? Yeah. It, the way Mastroni has them playing, do you want to throw Max into that, or would you rather have him come in around sixty or seventy and take Lewis's spot up top? I guess what I say when I say I want to see Max, I want to see Max be apparently good enough in training to earn a start. Sure. We know when players come to Colorado that Frazier takes his time usually with giving them like a full run out as they bet into his system and, yeah. and understand like what their role is. So I guess I want it to be the case that Max has been doing so well in training that he justifies a start. Um, whether or not that does happen, like I don't know. Like I don't have a, a fly on the wall in the, uh, sure. you know, on the training ground, but. Um, I'd love to see Max. Uh, how about you, Yaya? What are you looking for? This what do, uh, any player you want to see that you think needs to step up? Anybody you you know anything specific that you're looking at? I think I'm just gonna try to look at Mac and um, Jack Price really control that midfield. 
um, how Joseph said, they pressure a lot. So they're going to really have to be on their game, make sure they don't turn over the ball when they're trying to pass through the midfield. Um, I think they're just. I'm also going to look at Jonathan Lewis and see if he can get back there. Um, I thought he had a great game against the Houston Dynamo. Uh, I want to see if he can continue that because I've been a huge hater. I think yep. he was like, I, I don't think he was good the first couple of games. <laughs> I think he just kind of got lost and we couldn't see him. Sure. And then in this Houston game, he really showed up. You can notice that he was making his runs. He was controlling the ball and he was passing with a lot of accuracy. And I just want to make sure that he, he can keep that going. Or like Joseph was saying, Max needs to, step, needs to step up and earn that start and take that spot from Jonathan Lewis. You know, I think this is one of those games when you brought it up with Price where you almost want him to be the fourth center back at times and play from that far back and really, really be direct with his passing from a deeper position and not give up those breaks that you've been talking about that have haunted the Rapids in these in these fake Salt Lake matchups. Um, Joseph, I know you, you, you deep dive as much as anyone. Is there something specific in terms of a matchup that you think you'll see Frazier maybe take advantage of or should take advantage of? Is it like, where is the area on the field that they can capitalize on the most, especially against this, this depleted roster that fake Salt Lake is putting up? It's 100% the center back positions. Like I think they'll look to uh, have whoever ends up being on the front three, like they want those runs to go through the middle. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit of a question, like how effective that can be based on like whether or not Lucas Estevez plays, um, because I think he's just such a, a strong creative facilitator from the left side. I mean, side. He's, he's probably been the best creator so far, I would, Straight I mean, I would up, argue. Yeah. Um, but another thing I want to point out is that when when the Rapids tend to face teams that like to bunker, that like to play on the counter, Frazier has often like conceded possession. And kind of take that away from them. That's really In smart. order to take away like that transition gameplay, right? So we kind of saw that against Atlanta. They have like they like to do that under Gonzalo Pineda. Um, we also saw it against the non-playoff game against Portland last year um, when the Rapids won, I believe, either 2-0, 2-1, something like that, um, in, in, in September, um, where basically because the Rapids were playing a team that wanted to score in transition, sure. that wanted to make opportun or create opportunities that way, the Rapids just let them have the ball and had them try to break the Rapids down only to respond with transitions, or transition and counterattacks of their own. So I could see that coming. I, I could see that game plan coming into play. Uh, prediction. Go, Dev. Oh, I've never gotten one of these right. That's um, okay. <laughs> that's not what this is for, obviously. Uh, yes, it is. If you never get one right, we're kicking you out. You're never. Yeah, you're never back. coming back on the show if you don't get this. No, right. you're not. You're never coming back to the bar. You're yeah. out of here. <laughs> Three one. Who's your goal scores? Uh. Estevez is going to play. He's going to get one. Hey, oh, love to see that. Uh, Rubio is going to get one. And uh, K is going to get one. Ooh, that would be a spicy little day. Hmm. Joseph. My prediction is 2 0. Oh, Dos Acero. I think we're going to see Rubio score, like Devin said. But I also, I'm going to throw like Trusty out there as a dark horse to get yeah. a goal off a set piece. Either Trusty or Wilson, maybe like leaping through the air Ooh. and like putting the ball in the back of the net off leaping. of Jack Price. Soaring. Line. Like a Through salmon, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, hit me. What do you got? What do you think? I always go wild on these, so I think it's 4 0. Yeah, you always go yeah. nuts on these. Hey, that, uh, that Atlanta one I almost got. You did. One goal. You did. And I really do think it's going to be like a high scoring game, but I think it's going to be really one sided. 4 0. Um, so who's either scores? Either 3 0 or 4 0. I'll go with the 4 0. I think Jack Price gets one. I think Barrio gets one. And I think um, Rubio gets two. You're saying Jack Price is gonna get goals? Okay, okay. I think okay. he's just gonna try to shoot it from the like goal kick. Maybe, back. yeah. Like, right. Okay. It's been a hot minute since we've seen a Jack Price goal. I remember yeah, he yeah. scored. It's been like I remember he scored one from a free kick his like second <laughs> season yeah. against yeah. Toronto. I don't remember. I know he scored one uh, one other since then, but I can't yeah. remember who it was. I think I also think that uh, William Yarbrough is gonna have a great game. I think that who? he's uh, uh, Willie Oh yeah, Yarbrough. I think he's gonna have a great game. I think he's gonna come out and try to show that. Well, I mean, the striker they're playing yeah. has, what, 20 minutes of action all season? It's true. Yeah, who, who they have to start. Uh, so I agree on the zero. I'm going to go in the area of 2-0, and they're just going to bunker down and not let those counterattacks happen just because this is one of those games where if you don't respect that, they'll catch you off guard. Um, and I'm going to say that Max gets another goal late because he'll sub on because I don't think he'll start. But I think he'll be that 70th minute-ish. They'll be up one nothing, and they'll be up one nothing on a lawless header off a corner. That's my prediction. 
lock it down. Bet your anytime goal scorers right there. Uh, and uh, make a shitload of money off of that right there. Um, yeah, yeah. We got a game. First of all, I want to talk to these guys that have been around the C38. Sure. They've been around everybody. Yeah, yeah. What does this game mean to you guys? Like, how, like, what sort of passion brings out this game for you guys? That right, been not on a global bit? scale, on a personal scale. Yeah, like, not like, oh, what does it mean for the fans? What does it mean to you guys personally? Like, what is this for you guys? It means hours and hours of driving through the middle of nowhere um, <laughs> to get to these games. It means extremely hot and muggy July days where you really don't want to be in that awful place called Sandy, Utah. It means uh, extreme frustration and wondering why you even root for the Rapids sometimes. Um, it means being elated when they finally do break through and win. Um, I'm thinking of Josh Gatt and that one time when he we, when we won at home and he went and he did the 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 bucking cowboy on the flag afterwards. I the guts get burned in my memory. Um, it uh, it's. It's the premier game. It really is. It mean it, like if we don't if we don't make the playoffs, we damn well better beat Salt Lake. How about you, Joseph? I mean, I don't know how I can follow that up. That pretty much covered all the bases. But <laughs> one, one thing I to. would like to add, like from a Colorado <laughs> club perspective, is that only one manager has ever taken home multiple Rocky Mountain Cups. And that was uh, Fernando Clavio back in 0506, The first two years, the rivalry was was around. Uh, Robin Frazier already has one in 2020. Um, and I think it would be really good for the Rapids to like get that monkey off their back early this season by just having a really strong performance against Salt Lake and immediately uh, like sort of quelling all doubt that any comeback, any potential comeback on the return leg in Sandy just like uh, a could overturn the bashing. deficit. Yeah, I mean, that would be ideal. I, I, I see it panning out a little bit less ideally, but... Um, I think the Rapids like really do need to like focus on like getting everything they can out of this one, um, and I think it would be good for them to finally, I don't know, win. I, I, it's not consecutive ones because last year went to Salt Lake, but um, Boo. it would be Take really multiple ones. it would be really good for Frazier to get a second one. I think I would I would really like to see that. So for those who don't don't know that are new to the Rapids or trying to get into this team. Real Salt Lake is more hated than the Raiders. Uh, fake Salt Lake, sorry. Fake Salt Lake is more hated than the Raiders, more hated than the Suns and the Utah Jazz, um, more hated, I think, than the Dodgers. Dude, I have heard Rapids fans of like the top ten vulgar things I've heard said about other teams. Probably nine of them have been Rapids fans talking about Real Salt Lake. <laughs> so, just the this team brings out so many negative emotions in every supporter that actually cares about this team, right? Yeah. Real Salt Lake will make you want to like punch somebody that's from Utah that knows nothing about the team, <laughs> but you want to punch that person because they're from Utah. You see the license plate, and it makes you irrationally angry. Exactly. So like now we have all this anger and hatred in us, and I want to see how far it actually goes. I'm going to tell you guys one thing, and you guys are going to tell me what you hate more, what I'm mentioning or Real Salt Lake. Okay? Let's kick it off real quick. First one is, do you hate know-it-alls or Real Salt Lake more? Real Salt, Real Salt Lake. Lake. Fake Salt Lake, for sure. Definitely. Okay. Do you hate being late or Real Salt Lake more? I'm one of those freaks that shows up to everything like half an hour early and sits in my car to show up, right? Like the second that the clock switches over to the agreed upon meeting time. So I have to say being late have to yeah i'm unfortunately <laughs> in like that exact same boat like i'm like 30 45 minutes early to everything and then so. i just how late are we like, talking here yeah like let's say you're five minutes late so can't do it minutes, nope minutes, nope I nope being late yeah, nope. I, could, I could probably handle five okay minutes. can't do it i'm a freak for me i hate ralph all like a lot more than being yeah. late all i right. could i can get away with being late but ralph all like for me i can't itchy blankets or hating ralph all like oh, God, oh that's that, a good one that's hard but Real Salt Lake. Yeah. I'll cozy into any blanket. Yeah. But yeah, Salt, Salt Lake has definitely provided more, uh, I guess, Itchiness? negative emotions <laughs> right, over the years than itchy blankets, I think. All right. Stubbing your toe 
or Real Salt Lake? Real Salt Lake. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll proudly stub my toe to win. <laughs> to win I Saturday. will give a yeah. I will stub all ten toes if it means four nil like you predicted. Yeah, straight. Uh, I'm right there with you guys. <laughs> People who leave the door open when they walk out of your room or Real Salt Lake. I'm really getting into your guys' pet peeves here. Like, yeah, I'm really trying to, like, find something. That's oddly specific, yeah, yeah. Uh, this doesn't <laughs> apply to me, so... Yeah, I yeah, yeah. me and my wife, yeah, like, we only have a one bedroom, and the dog kind of has the run of the house, really, so yeah, the screw, door stays open. Salt Lake. Yeah, yeah, same here, yeah. Like, Algebra fake salt or Ralph Salt Lake? Oh, that's tough. I hate math so much. Um, Algebra got a lot easier with Wolfram Alpha. <laughs> I'll use a computer or a calculator to figure it out. No, thank you. you. No, no, I have okay, no use for Algebra in my life. Fake Salt Lake, boo. Pimples or Real Salt Lake? Oh. Yeah, whatever. Fake Salt Lake. Yeah, Salt Lake. Everyone yeah, has this. I work behind a computer. I it's called Cover it. Up, dude. <laughs> I have it right now. That's why it looks so great on screen right now. The Dallas Cowboys <laughs> <laughs> or Real Salt Lake? Eh. Nah. Don't no. care about the Cowboys. Yeah. Cowboys aren't even relevant. Who cares? Yeah, Fake Salt Lake, boo. I almost feel sorry for the Cowboys now. Yeah, I'm there's no there. pity for Salt Lake <laughs> when they're bad you know what i mean yeah i love to see that like yeah. when we're also like misses the playoffs that's amazing when dallas misses it misses the playoffs it's just expected at this point all right blisters or we're out salt lake man you you gotta jump it up i am it's salt lake little. it's salt lake salt it's salt lake, okay. salt lake. I, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna speak for these guys i yeah. know they'll have a blister for a salt lake breaking a nail or we're out salt lake same yeah salt lake i'll yep. break a nail for salt yep. lake a you gotta step it up you gotta step it up bad haircut or out salt lake I mean, I don't have any hair, so Salt Lake. Yeah. Was <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. well, the lone Joseph as, is the as, only as one who actually styles anything. Haver, <laughs> as the lone hair haver, the lone I, I'd still say, I'd, like, <laughs> if you gave me the option of having a bad haircut for like a month, or the Rapids like thumping Salt Lake in two matches on the year, I'm yeah. gonna take the Rapids thumping Salt Lake every okay. time. Well, no, but you have to have yeah yeah yeah. yeah. But you have to have the haircut. Right. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. yeah, yeah. All right. Dealing with the insurance company or Real Salt Lake? Oh, oh this is extraordinarily relevant for me right now. Uh, <laughs> I feel bad for you, Joseph. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's all good. Wow, I just dragging it up, yeah, yeah. Just giving him PTSD on the show out of nowhere. Wow, this is great content. Um, Joseph just crying uh, in the corner of the studio. Uh, <laughs> that's why you can't hear him right now. He's off my. I had oh, a good sad. experience last time. Joseph Salt Lake. Yeah. My answer is Salt Lake. Until we get into some really gnarly stuff, but yeah, yeah I was gonna say I'm yeah. saying Salt Lake. All right, get yeah, I think I still think you need to step it up a bit. Spending a night in jail or Route Salt Lake. Ooh. Okay, now we're actually getting somewhere. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know yeah. Right. Okay. Jail here or Just jail so you guys know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, where is the jail? Is this right. underneath uh, Rio Tonto? All right. <laughs> Just so you guys know, I did spend a day in jail. Wow. Twenty-three hour lockdown. It was the worst time of my life. Yeah. And I would still take Real Salt Lake. Wow. Really? Like, I would go through that again, even though it gave me extreme PTSD of the cops. Like, I would never yeah. talk to him again. Hey, are we talking Salt Lake Jail or are we talking Denver Denver County? Denver County, where I spent it. Real Salt Lake or Denver Oh, Denver County, County for sure. No chance. Hour, I would melt. 23 hour lockdown, only one hour to go out. What do you guys say? Jail. If it's for the win to win the cup. Oh, yeah. So yeah. they win the cup and I'm flipping cars? Yeah. Yeah, like for sure. If it's to win the cup <laughs> or in the playoffs, I'll do it. No, nope, it's just, it's just like, like you just spent a night in jail. Like it has no yeah. connotation to anything at all. It's just like you're just spent a night in jail. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, how you didn't go to court and you got a warrant. And you didn't like, that's about it. Uh, yeah. Jail. Sorry. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd hate spending the night in jail more probably. It'd be a fun story. It would be a good story, but... I'm a baby. I would not do yeah. well in jail. It sucks, guys. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, but I, I would do poorly. Listen, everybody I've talked to has, it, has it, it described their night in jail. Like if any, everybody I've talked to has been to jail has described their night in jail exactly the way you just did, and that makes me a bit too scared straight to. I to, would still take Rats all Lake as somebody that's gone. <laughs> I would literally take. You're the Rats only Lake. one that can speak to it. <laughs> yeah, so I would take Rats all Lake. What uh, else you got? All right. Would you rather have – are you a football fan? I grew up in Alabama, so, so okay. college football. Would you rather War have – War Eagle. Would you guys rather have the Whoa. Raiders win a Super Bowl? Like what would you hate more, the Raiders winning a Super Bowl or Real Salt Lake? Real Salt Lake oh, winning yeah. the – Oh, yeah. I would – No, no, no. Just like Real Salt Lake. Who, what do you hate As more? As an entity? Yeah. 
Oh yeah, no, I hate I hate Salt Lake more. I hate Salt Lake more because uh, the Raiders have been so so irrelevant for so long and doesn't matter. Uh, and you, like, I as hate a, the Chiefs. As a child of Fresno, California, I would be pretty stoked if Devontae and Card got a title together. That'd be pretty sick. I'm Although it would be I'm the Raiders who would suck. You keep but talking. I will mute you. You can't. This is my podcast, dude. This is mine too, and I can mute you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. No Raiders can't do it. Can't do it. Raiders. Would you hate breaking your leg? Or Ralph Salt Lake. I more. felt. Are we that talking when femur? That. Are we talking femur? Femur. Shin? Femur. femur. Biggest bone in your body. Yeah. My buddy actually in high school we were playing. Uh, our ultimate team was playing, and then we decided to just throw some disc afterwards. And he ran into a telephone pole and broke his femur in two places. True story. And it was six months of not walking, and then three months with a cane. And or two months with a cane or something yeah, like sorry, that. Yeah, sorry, I'd hate that way more. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. That's it six bad. months it is of immobility. Gnarly. So breaking your leg. I'll do sure. it for the, the for MLS Cup against them or something like that. Boom. Do that. But that's it. No, yeah. you actually. I really do hate him. I understand him. the game. I understand the game, but I have to come up with some sort of caveat at this point. Yeah, like, yeah. no, no. And the thing is, I get it. I think this is the first one where I would say I hate. Would I? I've never broken a bone. I would hate to break a bone. Whoa! Compared I've broken like. I'm not kidding. I think I've broken before. over twenty bones. I've never broken a bone. I've literally broken like every one, but like one of my fingers. Like, how, how have I you think? Never I mean, broken I've broken. Let's see. I broke my arm in five spots at once. I've broken two fingers, two ribs, a bone in my foot. Oh, and a rib on this side, too. I can't believe I've got a jail before I've broken a bone. I'll tell you that much. I've never broken a bone, but I... And, oh, and my collarbone. Uh, I think that's it. What's something that you guys absolutely hate? Like, besides Ralph Salt Lake. Man, that's tough. But and I don't else? know. I And you know what's funny? is like we talked about this since Monday, and I've been thinking about things I hate. And now that you said name something you hate, I can't think of any. Um... Oh, uh, I mean, while we're, on the football, uh, while we're on the football subject, I'll say like, Alabama. I can't stand Alabama, man. Like, and that's, <laughs> and that's something like I've just been, I was just like, Yo, same too, yeah. like, too. like, but like every time I see like Alabama, like at a number, at number one in the AP poll or something, something like that. Oh, I'm Manchester city. It's like, no. Oh yeah. I hate, oh. La- I hate the Lakers and their fans. Okay. They so they own everything. So, okay. I'm going to give you guys each an alternate ultimatum specifically to you guys. Okay. Would you rather have Man City win five straight no. Premier Cups and Man U win no Cups at all? Okay. But the Rapids win three straight Cups. Oh, three. That's I never gonna, happened before. I thought you were going to say one and I would be very easily yeah, saying Yeah, I know that. it would be easy for uh, you. But That's three. Like, I mean, dude, it's tough to say United's won more than anybody. When you say Cups, you mean like the Rocky Mountain Cup, right? No, no, like no. three MLS, MLS Cups. Oh, like, wow. no, I'll no. take the three Cups for sure. Yeah, Give me the three cups. three cups. Rapids, baby. Okay, this time for Dev. Right. Would you rather the Lakers have 10 winning seasons, five NBA championships, or but the Rapids don't win anything? Wait, I really cock myself. You, 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 yeah. You're in your head here. Yeah, I, I Basically, cock. would you yeah. rather have the Lakers be great and the Rapids be bad? Yeah. Basically, I've already lived through the Lakers being great, so I think I can handle that. <laughs> yeah, okay, that like, that's the one I couldn't take. That, I, that one got really confusing for me. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, I think yeah. we got in our own heads yeah, on that one. On that the one point even, is, and yeah. I think I can I can just boil this down here. I can recap this for for Yaya in in one simple I, sentence. I got that one got really complicated. That, I'm still trying to think about it. <laughs> well, here's what we're saying: Fake Salt Lake is the worst. Plain and simple. No one wants them to win. There are some songs that will be sung in the supporters section. That I won't sing here, but I know say some things about, uh, you know, certain lifestyles. To the Adams uh, family thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, something along those lines. Um, and you know what? They deserve it. Salt Lake sucks. Boo lot, you. Lot of I hope, of I hope you stub your toe, and I hope you have to deal with insurance. I hope every single Salt Lake player has to break a leg. Well, no, that's mean. Uh, but definitely stub all their toes, deal with insurance. What else did we say? To say like bee stings or anything like that, they get stung by bees. I hope everything terrible for Salt Lake, and I think everyone on this panel can agree with that. I have so much sports hate. Like <laughs> I want all of them to have like small injuries, and not, like they're okay afterwards. But like, yeah, except for Paula Mastroianni, that's the only one I want to be okay. And David Ochoa, because he's Mexican and. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, listen, I know, I know, it's like kind of a mean like to to hate on Pablo, but I I, I am happy that Pablo Mastroianni has found like some like. 
Very. success as a, as a as an MLS head coach. I wish it would have been with the Rapids. Like that would have been ideal. Um, but like, don't I don't harbor like I don't know hatred for him personally. He seems like a good guy. All right, guys. I think that's gonna wrap for it uh, today for this week. Um, look for us to do a post game Saturday night after I make it back here to the bar from the game. Um, go ahead and uh, like and subscribe to the DNVR YouTube page and like this video with that thumbs up. Helps us out. Um, become a member at the DNVR.com. Make sure to buy shirts from the DNVR locker, uh, which we have our rapid shirt in there and we have something super cool. And I know I keep teasing it, but I still haven't heard anything back. So we're still waiting on them, but they're not far away at this point. Um, so something cool is coming your way. Uh, might be a hint uh, right there on that table uh, if you see that on the YouTube show. Um, something cool. Uh, last plugs, Devin, where can they find you? Uh, the underscore Dev Machine on Twitter, at The Grill, at the C38 Tailgates, and on the Party <laughs> at Bus. At The Grill. <laughs> and on the Party Bus this weekend. Usually, oh, I'm yeah. there, I, usually I'm the one making all the food and setting everything up, but this week I'm going to make an exception and I'm be on that bus. Yeah, nice. buy your tickets for oh, your Party Oh, yeah, get guys. your tickets through C38. Hang out here at the bar. Yeah, yeah, I'll be here. I'll be here. We'll be hanging out. Uh, it should be fun. Joseph, where can they find you? You can find me at JSPSAM on Twitter. Um, my writing is on josephsamuelson.com. If you're interested in reading like, deep dives on Rapids content, deep, I also deep want dives. to show good deep off dives. or shout out C38 for this awesome Rocky Mountain Cup uh, scarf. That should be on sale at the tailgate this I weekend. So. Let's go. Um, I think you can also. I, I bought it off their website. Um, I think they still should still have um, scarves left. It's really awesome. Um, I'm happy to add it to my seemingly never ending scarf collection. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. How about you? Plug your Twitter or anything? Um, just follow DNVR Rapids. Follow us around everywhere. Yeah. Um, my uh, it's a uh, yeah here G underscore Vasquez I think I think it's under yeah 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 that sounds yeah, right yeah I need to ask Mitch because he knows me a lot better than I know myself <laughs> at this point we spend so much time together yeah he make sure to me. follow me at underscore underscore Mitchell James look out uh, early next week uh, for Ryan Green to drop his vlog from the trip to the dick this weekend uh, it should be great guys uh, thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you Saturday for the post game up the pids baby.